Hello and welcome along to Mondo Chalavet Movies. My name is John and this video is going to be my entire Umberto Lenzi collection. Now Umberto Lenzi is a director that is an Italian director that has directed a lot of uh, good horror films and crime dramas and also some giallos. Now as you can see in the 88 film collection there's a lot of uh, Umberto Lenzi movies in there. Now I, I do think he's a great director and he's, he's, he's right up there with Fulci and also Argento and Mario Bava and Sergio Martino, some great directors. And mainly because of controversy, he's always regarded in this list of directors. But I feel that he's going to be a director that not many people have heard of, if you're just a casual viewer of these movies. But you probably have picked up one of it, one or two of his movies, or seen them at least in the shops. And I think it's time that people maybe regard him in as a higher uh, esteem as they, they do with uh, Fulci and also Argento. I know he's called Fulci, but I've always called him Fulci, so that's why I've mispronounced it. So when Lenzi started out, like most Italian directors, he copied Western cinema, and he went down the similar routes of spaghetti westerns. He went down uh, with Hercules and Sword and Sandals, and also they were a big copier of James Bond movies. And he released one called 008 Operation Exterminate. Now that's a great title if ever I heard one. So the earliest one I've got is from 1969. This is when this was his first movie that he made that wasn't in the sort of spaghetti westerns, Hercules type things. And it is so sweet, so perverse. Now this is in the Italian Italian classics collection. Now you will notice there's a lot of uh, Bert Olenzi ones in his. So this is spine number 67 and it's 1969. And this is... What a, what a package this is. I've got to say that this is just these ones from 88. They do an amazing job in them. And I'm so grateful for them for starting to release all this uh, lensy stuff, which up until now has been quite hard to get in the UK, especially in uh, Blu-ray form. And they've done some really good remasters as well. Now this one here is a 2K restoration, but this it looks great and it's a uh, giallo. This is when he first started off working with Carol Baker as well. And he's made about four or five films with her in the early 70s. It was a strange person to have this American actress and he didn't imagine her being in this type of movie. So Mario Barber in 1963 made the first ever giallo. So, but this is following quite close on it. And I think between 63 and maybe sort of 83, I think that was a golden period for giallos, one of the best ones. So that's so sweet, so perverse. Next up is 1970s Paranoia. Now this is Italian Classics Collection again. This is spine number 56 from 1970. And this, this is a great movie, great giallo. It's, to me, it's got a, a great story in here. It's one of those ones where I always think that if you imagine Columbo, and you imagine like a violent Columbo, for want of a better word, it, it's a good way to describe these. It's got these really interesting little stories with a twist at the end. And this one's, you know, is, is one of those ones. And these presentations from 88, they're showing a lot of love to Lenzi, which is great because this, this director could have been long forgotten about. But I think with 88 drawing him into their collection, I think it's maybe pushing his, his work out there, the people who would normally not even go near it. I mean, I was a big fan of Lenzi, but I know that there was a lot of movies that I hadn't even heard of, like in the early stuff, and I hadn't even got my hands on. And with 88 releasing them, you can find it, you can get a lot of Lenzi stuff if you want to. So that's Paranoia. Next up is 1971's Oasis of Fear. Now this is on DVD by Shameless and it's fully uncut. Now when I was I was looking through this, I thought, have I seen this movie before? I know I bought a load of Shameless DVDs when they were on sale in HMV a while ago. I don't know if this is available on Blu-ray at all, but when I've, when I've looked at this movie, I thought, I think I know you need to check this out because I can't remember anything about it. But the, the story of it, which means that these this couple go around selling photographs of uh, you know each other, and they get into a, sort of a difficulty with doing that. It uh, it seems there's, there's something there's something problematic about that. So apparently their escapades turn a bit sour. So yeah, I'm interested to see this. Plus with it being fully uncut as well, don't know if it's got a Blu-ray release. If it has, I might check it out because. I would love someone else to release this if this is one that can do that because this seems to be quite uh, quite a movie. So that's 1971's Oasis of Fear. Next from 1972 is Seven Bloodstained Orchids. Now this is a GL as again. And these movies are really entertaining, I've got to admit. This is spine number 59 in the Italian collection. And 
I always, when I get these movies, I always check them out straight away. The only one I haven't done is So Sweet, So Perverse, because I don't want it to spoil Diabolique, as I've already said. And these movies always look good. They've always got some really good transfers. It's a 2K transfer. And I would imagine all of these are uncut, or as much uncut as they can get. I know some of them are a little bit cut. Uh, mainly for animal violence. Yes, that, that, uh, that old chestnut. But these movies here, these early giallos, are what, exactly what they are, the early giallos. But I find that that early giallo is always a good one. It's always it's because this was a new format. It was one of these ones where you thought the Italians kind of invented this one because usually they were kind of copying a lot of stuff from Western cinema. But they kind of more or less invented this. Yes, it is more like a Hitchcock movie. If they had to say it was copying some it, I would say it was copying Hitchcock. But they do it with a really good spin. I think that the Italian market was a perfect place for uh, giallo movies. And I think that when you want to watch a giallo, try and seek out Italian uh, movie. And also do go and look at Lenzi stuff because there's Lenzi giallos. It, it wouldn't, it's not the, the greatest of giallos, but his giallos are always entertaining for me. So that's Seven Bloodstained Orchids. Next up from 1972 is a very controversial film. It is Man from Deep River or Deep River Savages. This is one of those on the Bound Video Nasties list, and it was what you could say it was the first of a cannibal movie. Now, what it did feature in here was, of course, graphic animal cruelty. And I think it might not have been the first uh, movie to do that, but it was definitely the first cannibal movie to be a cannibal movie and to put that stuff into it. Maybe he sort of create, created a bit of a trend to do with that, which isn't really a good trend to have, but unfortunately it kind of progressed from the most of the 70s when there was a, a cannibal movie came out. It did feature animal cruelty, which is, it, it, it's a thing that happened, but it's uh, not, not a great thing to remember. You, you, it's great to know that this thing doesn't happen anymore, and it's, it's good to put that in the past. This movie, this version here, is cut. It's got a few scenes cut out of it, but it's also left a few scenes in it. So if you watch it and you think you're not going to see any animal cruelty, you will see some animal cruelty. Now, I reckon, I have heard that some of the stuff in here is fake. It doesn't really look fake to me. There's definitely someone here that's not fake. But this here is actually a really good movie. Now, I was, I was expecting it to be pretty, you know, rubbish, actually. 1972 cannibal movie. It, but to me, it's not. It's more like a love story, actually. This Westerner here goes into this tribe and he's got to try and prove himself, a bit like the film Man Called Horse. He's got to prove himself to the tribe that he's worthy of being in the tribe. So he's got to go through all of these, like, sort of um, tests. But he forms an unlikely love affair with the great Mimi Lai in this movie. She's in quite a lot of the cannibal movies. And uh, she's also in another uh, cannibal movie by Lindsay called uh, Eaten Alive, which I haven't got, but I have seen. And I think that's quite brutal, actually. It's one of the most brutal ones out there. It's one that I'm not eager in revisiting, put it that way. Although it is on the Barn Video Nasties list, I believe. This one here, for me, is a great movie. Yes, it's got some animal cruelty in it, I know, but... It's, it's much more than you would think. It's not an out-and-out gore-fest. It's more an exploration of this, this fella and his love affair with this woman. So this, for me, is highly recommended. It is cut and it does feature animal cruelty. So that's Deep River Savages. Next up, also from 1972, is Knife of Ice. Now, this has just been released by 88 Films. It's by number 73. It's a giallo again. Now, the, the strange... Where this movie is, that uh, Carol Baker here, again, she plays somebody who can't speak. Now, there's a, there's a reason behind that. And I have watched half of this movie. I watched it late at night, so I fell asleep. Nothing to do with the movie. I was having a great time in the movie. It was just too late. But I wanted to check it out. It's got a 2K restoration. I've got to say the restoration is okay, but it's not as good as some of them in here. It's a little bit, a little bit ropey in places, shall we say. But it might be one of those movies where you just can't get a good negative on it. And... I think that the, the twist in here is going to be quite good, the fact that this person can't speak. That, to me, is, is quite a uh, good... She, where she talks, to, she talks to someone on the phone at the start of the movie, and I thought, how on earth is she going to talk to somebody? But she taps Morse code on the phone receiver to get her point across to the, the person she's speaking to, which I thought was a really good little twist to this. Now, that may come back in the second half of the movie, I don't know, but I can't wait to watch the end of this movie, which I'll probably watch tonight. So that's Knife of Ice. Next up is 1974's Spasmo. Now this movie stars Susie Kendall from Bird with a Crystal Plumage. And I've got to say this is quite a good movie. 
It's not your usual giallo. It's got a little bit of a twist on it. It's uh, spine number three in the Italian Classics collection. I think it was the first one they released of lenses. And it's not a bad watch at all. It's a one that I had no... This is when I first started to see these movies and think, hang on a minute, they, they seem like they're going to release more of his stuff and I don't know anything about this movie, this early Jello movie. I want to uh, check more stuff of his out because all the movies I've seen of his, like I say, I have enjoyed. And this one here is a really good, really good movie, actually. I, th th some of these early ones, I don't know if they're still in print. I think they are, but I'm not too sure. Hopefully they are. So, yes, another good Giallo. That's Spasmo. Also from 1974 is... Almost Human, I have the sense of that a little bit. This movie here, I haven't seen this movie at all, but it's it's fully uncut from uh, from Shameless. And I have heard a lot of people saying that this is a really good movie. I think this movie is a bit more like a crime mafiosi movie, which you can see that Umberto Lenzi is trying to get into in the, at this point. He's got all his horror films there, or you could say his giallo films. I would say none of them are like pure horror films. And this is more like a violent cop drama. And it does star Henry Silver, who's a great person. He's done quite a few of his movies. And he's a great actor in this thing. He plays a good bad guy. He's got a face like a really good bad guy face. Now, this is another one that a lot of people say it's very good, but I haven't watched it yet. But I really, I'm really eager to see the ones I haven't watched here. Because the ones that I'm looking at and I'm thinking, oh, I haven't seen that one. They're really speaking to us about the, what, what's in it, what, what they're actually showing this movies. So that's almost human. Next came 1975's Eyeball. Now this is spine number 45 from the Italian collection. This has got a great slipcover here. This is when they started putting some good slipcovers. It's probably the first slipcover that they had that I, that I got in the collection. And they've done slipcovers and stuff ever since. This is a great giallo. Now what happens is in this movie, you might have guessed from the title, this killer does uh, take people's eyeballs out and collects them. There's a reason behind that, but great little giallo, and that's a good little twist on it. The fact that all the people, the victims, don't have any eyes. And uh, yeah, pretty gory, as you can imagine. And I think it was, uh, even though it was a 15, I think this movie is a really good movie. It's a 2K restoration, and I think this is when I thought myself, this is, a, this is the stuff that I really want to check out with Lindsay. So I had heard of this movie before, but it's funny when you see it and you think, oh, this is a... Um, Berto Lenzi movie and you, you don't really realise how many movies he's actually done you think of him just doing it, the ones, the famous ones and then you think oh he's released all these other ones in the meantime he's very prolific actually I think that was the thing about Italian directors they really just worked for a living they didn't just make one here there and everywhere it was kind of like one, two, three, four a year and they just cracked on and they just sometimes they did some, made some gems this being one of them so that's Eyeball so after Eyeball Lenzi pretty much dropped the horror slasher giallo type movies he moved on and he moved on to cop dramas and a lot of his movies coming up are cop dramas so next up is 1975's syndicate sadists now this is a great movie now what he did is he start, he's using thomas million who's a great actor was a great actor unfortunately he is uh, starring in most of his movies coming up from now and i tell you what he's a great actor he's one of those movies one of those uh, stars in in uh, italy when you see him on a, a movie and you think, oh, get in, he's in this movie. So that's that's a good boost for me when you get these two working together. And he obviously must have liked Lenzi a lot because he was uh, showing up a lot of his movies. So um, sadly, I think they both went about the same time, unfortunately. But these movies here, it's just like, it was like a thing in, the, in Italian cinema where it got these really hard-hitting cop dramas, very violent, very bloodthirsty. And he had these like tough guys and they were you know took no prisoners and i think it was more than dirty harry type things you know that they just uh ran with that formula for a quite in the middle 70s maybe the the british tv show the sweeney had that type of formula as well there's a lot of these buddy cop things in here and uh yeah pretty brutal this is a great movie this, this thomas million in here when he's on his motorcycle it does say that he's a bit like rambo and he is actually a bit like rambo when you when you watch this movie so in a fashion now, when I say, you know, when I say people, oh, this is like a Rambo movie, don't immediately go out and if Rambo is your mo favourite movie to go and watch it. I'm just saying it sort of reminds me a bit of Rambo. But if you like Rambo, you might get a blast out of this. It's quite good as well. So that's Syndicate Sadists. Next up is 1976's The Tough Ones. This is spine number 65 on the Italian Classics collection. And this is 
this is a great presentation. This I haven't watched this one yet, but I want to watch these ones in order because of the fact of these um, these these cop dramas. I like them. I want to watch them in order of what uh, what they'll put out. So yeah, great presentation again from '88. Can't wait to see this one. It's been one of the ones that I've had on the shelf, and I thought I must get around to that. But I need to get myself into a cop drama mode, which I think is coming up soon. Because uh, with looking through these these movies, I'm starting to think I need to get some of these watched quite quickly because uh, I left them on the shelf a bit too long. Also, it starts as well, Mauricio Merli, who is a great actor in these movies, and obviously Thomas Million. So that's a winning formula. So that's the tough ones. Also from 1976 is Free Hand for a Tough Cop. Great title. Now this is released on Fractured Visions label. Haven't watched this one yet, unfortunately. Do want to watch it. Even though I haven't watched this yet, I always find these movies very entertaining to watch. I think they're always good to have this sort of d dirty Harry element to it. The fact that these people don't take no prisoners. You have a great bad guy in here and there's some really heavy violence in it. I think that ticks all the boxes for me. So that's free hand for a tough cop. Next is 1977's The Cynic, The Rat and the Fist. What a title. This is spine number 17. And I tell you what, this is a great movie. I watched this movie and I was blown away by it. It stars as well. Get a load of this. Maurizio Merli, John Saxon and Thomas Million. So what a team that is. This this one here has a lot of twists and turns to it. It's one of the best ones I've seen actually in this in this uh, genre. I find it the so entertaining, and this one's one of the most entertaining ones as well. Uh, it has great performances from everybody in here, and it's got some it's got some really good got some really good violence in it. And by I mean violence, I mean the fact of the way that these these gangs go to with each other. In the way that can get sort of retribution on each other. So even though these movies are from the 70s, I think they play out really well today. So put yourself in the 70s mode when you're watching it. And this title does actually mean something in the movie. It's not just a really strange title. So that's The Cynic, The Rat and The Fist. Next is 1978's Brothers Till We Die. Now, funny enough, I didn't think I was going to like this movie. When it came out, I thought, I don't know if I'm really into this. This is spine number 57. And obviously it stars Thomas Million. And it is one where it's got the fella who is, is the hunchback. Now what he does is he plays two brothers. The hunchback brother and then the brother who doesn't have the twins actually. And it's it's a great, great movie. And I, I've got to say that this character, this is the first time I saw this character. Even though he's in quite a few of these movies. I think Thomas Million plays him in all of the movies. I know they're not all directed by Lindsay. I thought he was just an absolutely great watchable character. He's got so much depth to his character. It's great when you get a movie like that that you think, oh, this is not going to be my cup of tea whatsoever. I know it's a crime drama, but I don't think it was going to go in the way that it was, that it did. And uh, I'll tell you what, I had a real good blast with it. I really highly recommend this. So that's Brothers Till We Die. So after those cop dramas, Lindsay went into the horror market. And I've got to say this next one coming up is probably my hands down, my favourite Lindsay movie of all time. It is 1980s. Nightmare City. I'll flip the cover around on this just so I can hide the A certification on there. This movie, if you haven't seen it, released by Arrow, is a complete blast. I just can't. It's a 2K restoration. I would love them to see them get a 4K of this out. I would just think it was just one of the best things ever. I do know they had problems with the print on this, so it might be they might struggle to uh, to do that. Unfortunately, this movie is just like a, a romp. It's like a zombie. Is it a zombie romp? I don't think it is. I think it's uh, people who are like contaminated by something, some kind of virus. So this group of infected people who get off the plane, they just run rampage through the city. And this group here are trying to, you know, kind of uh, combat them. But it's just such a brilliant movie. And yes, the ending on here, if you don't know about it, I'm not going to tell you about it. But if you haven't seen it, well, if you have seen it, you know what I'm going to talk about, what I'm talking about. But if you haven't seen it, you have got to just be aware that the, I personally think this is one of the best endings you'll ever see in a movie. But a lot of people will say it's the worst ending that's ever been on a movie. But because it probably is the worst ending on a the movie, therefore, I think it's one of the best ones. Yeah, it's it's that strange. But I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Apparently it's one of ten, Quentin Tarantino's favourite movies. And it's, Quentin Tarantino loves a lot of this lensy stuff as well. So that's, if you like, Tarantino you might want to check out some of this stuff and highly highly recommended I would do a good job on this although the print's not as great as it could be it's got some flaws in it it's still a very watchable movie it's the best it's ever looked it'd be lovely to get a 4k of this out because I'd be buying it instantly 
So that's 1980's Nightmare City. So speaking of controversial movies, you don't get much controversial in this. Here is 1981's Cannibal Ferox. Yeah, this is by far Umberto Lenzi's most notorious movie. It is brutal beyond belief for me. It's it's probably, well, Cannibal Holocaust, is, I think, is more graphic. So even though I do enjoy this movie to a certain extent, it's a funny thing with cannibal movies, you kind of want to watch them, but you don't want to watch them, you know what's coming, and you, you know what's going for a really tough watch. But it is what it is, you've got to sit through some really bad stuff. I don't think this has got an animal-free version on it. I know Cannibal Holocaust on Grindhouse does have an animal-free version. I know that Cannibal Holocaust is coming out, but cut in the UK, unfortunately, which on 4K. I do think for some reason that if 88 wanted to release it, they should have just released it in the States and then we got it through uncut, like they did with uh, Gestapo's Last Orgy. But it is what it is. And this movie for me is, it's really, you know, it was, was also called Make Them Die Slowly, which is a, it was a great title, actually. And this, yes, this movie is, I would say, it sounds bad to say this is more like a light-hearted movie than Cannibal Holocaust. Cannibal Holocaust seems to be very, like, you know like really really serious this one doesn't seem to have that seriousness about it seems more like a bit of like a romp but with obviously really bad things in it it's got some really bad i don't know if it's the stuff that happens in here to the humans in here is worse than uh, in cannibal holocaust i think it is actually if i'm honest so yeah but this is very notorious and it's obviously in the uk but it's cut in the uk it'll never get released uncut in the uk as Cannibal Holocaust will not get released uncut in the UK. If you want uncut, you've got to go to the States. This is a great version. Uh, you get your CD soundtrack in here as well, which is great CD soundtrack, actually, if I'm honest. Great cover, got a lot of embossing on it. But, yeah, if you want to know what the most notorious Umberto Lenzi movie is, is by far this. That's Cannibal Ferox. Next up is 1983's Iron Master. Now, this was the one that I thought, oh, this would be great. This is spine number 27. And I thought... Yeah, this is going to be a one that I would like to watch because it's quite different to all the other stuff. It stars it stars the uh, the fella from Anthropophagus as a, a bit of a giant. And to be honest, I didn't like this movie at all. I put it on it was like Beastmaster, that type of thing. I thought, oh, this is going to be one of them ones, which I quite enjoy. Conan, you know that type of thing. And it was absolutely awful. But and I thought it's not even as it's not even so awful. It's good. But I, I've always thought I wanted to get and watch this one again because if I was honest, I would have saw this immediately because it's in the part of this collection. I don't do that. So it's in there. And it's by far my least enjoyable movie in all of this 88 Italian Classics collection. But I'm going to give it another shot. And I'm going to see, is it as bad as I thought it was? Because it was pretty awful. And this is the only one I can say out of these movies is to say, kind of avoid this movie because it is... It's really bad. There's nothing good you can say about it. But I do need to give it a second chance because I've only watched it the once. Didn't like it one little bit. But I do I do want to go back and say, did I really hate it as much as I thought I did? But it's it might be one of the ones that will come good on the second watch. I will give it a free pass and just say, well, you know, amuse me this time around. There was some animal cruelty in this which was cut out completely. I think there's a couple of bits in, but there's definitely one bit that was cut out. And I think they've left kind of one in as well, uh, which isn't isn't good. They could have done with cutting the both bits out for me. I don't really think this movie benefited from that. I don't think that some of these movies do benefit from the animal cruelty. It's, I mean, how could they? And you don't think, oh, that was, that, was, that was important to the story. They're not really important. They just put them in, I think, for shock factor. I don't know why it was even put into this thing. I mean, obviously, prehistoric things, you would have to do that type of thing. But they didn't have to show it. You would have known that that's what they would have done, like, like hunt and kill stuff to eat. But anyway... Uh, I do need to get back to this movie, and uh, it might be good on the second viewing, but I really don't think it will be. That's Iron Master. Next up is 1989's Nightmare Beach. This was another release from uh, Italian Classics, Spine Number 44. When I watched it, when I got it, I thought, oh yeah, it's a, it's a lengthy movie. I can't, you know, can't wait to watch it. So I watched it. It's got a brand new 2K transfer. I do know this looks really nice as well. And he seems to have moved into the, the Slasher series now. And his other movies that he's got here are slashes. And maybe that was this thing that he just went to. And this is one of his last movies. I think he finished movies making make movies in 1992. But obviously, or maybe in 96. But then he stopped long before he died. I think he just had enough of it. And 
this this movie itself it's like a it's a killer who's got a it's got a crush helmet on who kills on beaches and it's it's a pretty good slasher if i'm honest so because this movie was made in 1989 it was in the last throes of the the slasher genre but i think it was a quite a good entry into it and uh, i did have quite a lot of fun with it so that's nightmare beach so last up in the titles i own by umberto lenzi is 1989's hitcher in the dark now i watched this the other day and i had a blast with this movie this is spine number 72 it's just come out and this was great. I loved this movie. It's in a 4K transfer as well, and it looks absolutely spectacular. It's one of the best picture qualities I've seen in these in these Umberto Lenzi movies. The movie itself is quite different to what I was expecting it. I was expecting it to be, well, I don't know what I was expecting it to be. The short story is, there's a guy, and that's not a spoiler to say it's this guy. This guy has this Winnebago, and he goes around getting people, attacking them, and then killing them, and then moving on to another person. But, well, Hitchhike as he picks up. But he picks up this girl here as part of that. And he tried, he, he sort of, he's got a fixation about his mother. And he thinks that this girl looks like his mother. So he tries to make her look like his mother. And it's a great, like, and it, most of it happens in here. And it's a great, I don't know, it's a great story. It takes, it keeps you guessing, it keeps you intrigued in what, what's going to happen with it. It's got some great acting by these two, I've got to say that this, uh, this was a real surprise to be as good as I thought. I thought it was going to be average and quite enjoyable, but I really enjoyed this. This is one of the best horrors I've seen in quite a while with some great great sort of acting and great you know things in, in the way that the movie went. I was just really, really impressed by it, and I can't recommend this one highly enough. This is one of my favourite Lensy ones I've got in this collection. I can't wait to watch them all, and then I can probably do a top ten of what I think. Uh, is my top 10 of ones I've got. I do know, I would imagine, they're probably going to bring out more uh, Umberto Lenzi movies because I think that his movies sell quite well. And I would like to I would like to get more. I would like to get all the movies, sort of, I would say, maybe some of the spaghetti westerns I would try out as well. Some more cop dramas. I think his best movies are the cop, dram cop dramas. I think they come across like, he's, that was his forte. He does some good giallos, they're good. He does some good slasher stuff. He does some good, uh, well, the cannibal stuff is, you know, it, I suppose he invented the cannibal genre, which is, you've got to give him credit for that if you want to. But for me, the cop dramas are the ones where he really shines through. So, thanks for watching. You take care, and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers. <laughs>